Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second Sakura Alumni Association in Indonesia's reunion and lessons from Japan. My name is Mutiara. And I'm Olivia. Currently, we are the main coordinator of Sakura Alumni Association in Indonesia. We will be moderating the second side reunion and lesson from Japan webinar with the theme of one, reuniting members of the advancement of science and technology, and second, discover new opportunities to study and work in Japan from our inspiring speakers. And this, the purpose of this webinar is participants will feel inspired and motivated to pursue research and innovation in science and technology. Today on Saturday, 31st July, 2021, at 11 a.m. Jakarta time and 1 p.m. Japan time, we have our notable speakers who are going to give valuable lessons for all of us. And we will also hear a very special announcement at the end of this event. Before we start, I will inform you about the agenda today. We will hear a speech from our honorable guest, followed by the keynote session, and next week we have sharing session from three side members and after that Yasuo will give information about study and work in Japan and finally there will be a closing session and we will hear a special announcement regarding the new side coordinators. So first let us hear the opening speech from the president of Sakura Alumni Association in Indonesia, Miss Helen Christine. Miss Helen, the time is yours. <laughs> Hello, selamat pagi, konnichiwa, good day. Welcome to the second time reunion lessons from Japan. My name is Helen Christine, and currently I'm the president of Sakura Alumni Association in Indonesia. Nice to meet you, and I hope you are doing well. Firstly, I would like to briefly explain about SAI. SAI is an association of Sakura Science Plan alumni in Indonesia. Supported by Japan Science and Technology Agency, JST. It was established on 11 December 2019. Our goal is to connect all SSP members in Indonesia through various activities and programs. SAI also aims to introduce and encourage those who are interested in science and technology to pursue further studies and careers in Japan. Throughout December 2019 until now, SAI has held many successful events. Two of them are the SAI Talk Series and the Grand Webinar. SAI has also collaborated with other associations and organizations. Secondly, I would like to say thank you to His Excellency Mr. Harry Akmadi as the Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Republic of Indonesia. Dr. Laksana Tri Handoko as the Chairman of National Research and Innovation Agency, BRIN, and Dr. Kishi Teruo, Director General of Sakura Science Program Headquarters, GST, for being here today. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Moreover, I would like to thank His Excellency, Mr. Kanasugi Kenji, the Ambassador of Japan to the Republic of Indonesia, Mr. Nadi Makarim, the Minister of Education, Culture, Research, and Technology of the Republic of Indonesia, and Mr. Mitani Hidehiro, the Parliamentary Vice Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology, for sending us warm greetings. Also, thank you, Jaso in Indonesia, who has been giving sessions on every big event that we hold. Thank you, Mr. Njani Hanani Suyu, for coming. I would also express my gratitude to our keynote speakers, Dr. Yamada Mamoru, Dr. Ahmad Rimwat Tresna Nugraha, and our SAI speakers, Ms. Mazaya Najmina, Mr. Aji Resindra Widya, and Mr. Dieno Diba. I'm looking forward to your session. Thank you to all staff of GSD, GSTEC, Mr. Mohamed Fadel as the Vice President of SAI, Ms. Mutiara Firdausi, and Ms. Alivia Zaharatu as today's moderator, and all SAI mates coordinators for working very hard and made this event possible. Last but not least, thank you all participants for attending this second Sirenians and Lessons from Japan event. We are genuinely pleased to have you with us today. Enjoy the event. Thank you very much, Ms. Helens, for the speech. 
Also, we would like to invite Dr. Kishi Teruo to give the opening speech on this occasion. Dr. Kishi Teruo is the Director General of the Sakura Science Program Headquarters from Japan Science and Technology. I will be giving the stage to Dr. Kishi Teruo. Hello, Dr. Kishi Teruo. Dr. Kishi Teruo, the time is yours. Suramat Siya, Konnichiwa. Hello everyone, I'm delighted that all of you could join the second Saudi Union and lessons from Japan today. My name is Kishi Teruo. I am in charge of the entire Sakura Science program at JST since April of this year. First of all, I'd like to, to give my sincere thanks to all participants today. Although it is a pity that we could not meet face to face, we are able to hold this webinar online despite COVID-19. I'm very much concerned that the COVID-19 situation is still rampant in Southern East Asia, including Indonesia. I do hope this situation will subside as soon as possible and the direct interaction will start soon. The Sakura Science Group is the Alumni Association of the Sakura Science Exchange Program. This program started from 2014 and has invited approximately 2,400 young talented people from Indonesia to Japan. The Sakura Alumni Association in Indonesia, SAI, was established 2019 when the invitees from Indonesia got together in Jakarta and held the first alumni meeting. SAI planned many activities, not only annual meetings, but also SAI talk series, first year anniversary essay competition, and JST funding webinar. I recognize that SAI is one of the most cohesive, energetic, and passionate SSC alumni association in the world. I believe that this is a result of the 16 coordinators, including President Ms. Helen Christie, devotedly leading the alumni activities since its, its establishment. We could not be here today without their dedicated and devoted work. I'd like to express our deepest gratitude to the 16 coordinators on behalf of the members of the alumni association. In addition, New coordinators will be introduced today. I do hope that they will continue working energetically and proactively lead the activities of Alumni Association forward, just like the current coordinators. Today, excellent speakers, such as His Excellency, Mr. Kanasugi Kenji, Ambassador of Japan to the Republic of Indonesia. His Excellency, Mr. Heri Akumati, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Republic of Indonesia. Mr. Nadium Makarin, Minister of Education, Culture, Research, and Technology of the Republic of Indonesia. 
Mr. Mitani Hidehiro, Parliamentary Vice Minister of Education, Culture, Sport, Science and Technology. Dr. Lagzanta, Lagzana Turihando, Chairman of National Research and, in the, in, in, and Innovation Agency, BRIN, are uh, invited to give some speeches and lecture. It will be a precious opportunity to hear about their careers and their vision. I hope this webinar inspires you and opens up a new exciting path for your own future career. Please enjoy the webinar. Thank you very much. Tere ma kashi. Arigatou gozaimasu. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Kishidero. I will pass it to Olivia. Okay, thank you, Mutiara. Now, we would like to welcome our distinguished guest who will deliver some speech for all of us. Let's begin from Mr. Kanasugi Kenji as the Ambassador Extraordinary and Planning Potentiary of Japan to the Republic of Indonesia. Let's hear the video message from Mr. Kanasugi Kenji. His Excellency Nadim Makarim, Minister of Education, Culture, Research and Technology. His Excellency Laksana Torihandoko, Head of National Agency for Research and Innovation. His Excellency Heri Ahmadi, Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia to Japan. Mr. Mitani Hidehiro, Parliamentary Vice Minister of Education, Culture, Sport, Science and Technology. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, uh, Salamat Shian. It is a great honor for me to say a few words on this auspicious webinar organized by the Sakura Alumni Association in Indonesia and Japan Science and Technology Agency, JST. Since the Sakura Science Plan started in 2014, 33,000 youth, including students, researchers, and the government officials, mainly from the Asian region, visited Japan. Among them, more than 2,300 are from Indonesia. I have heard that some of those youth return to Japan to continue their study or research after having participated in this program. I am very pleased to know that this program has helped motivate young people to do so and served as the bridge of friendship between Japan and Indonesia. Since my arrival in Jakarta as ambassador in January this year, I have had opportunities to visit a number of government ministries and agencies. In doing so, I've been very impressed that so many government officials, including high-ranking members, have experiences to study science and technology in Japan and still maintain close ties with Japan. The same is true about other sectors in Indonesia, including business community and academia, and I'm quite certain that there are a large number of Indonesians who studied in Japan and are now serving as the bridge between our two countries. Taking this opportunity, I would like to express uh, our heartfelt appreciation for the Sakura Science Program as one of the most important uh, programs for nurturing such close relationship between us. One of the priorities of the current Indonesian government is, quote, human resource development and cultivating talent who are diligent, dynamic, skilled, and capable of employing knowledge and technology, end of quote. Strengthening scientific and technological capacity and cultivating highly skilled human resources are important vehicles for attaining long-term economic development, prosperity, and well-being of the people. The Sakura Science Plan is an important program that contributes to this development of human resources. I believe that you, as alumni of the Sakura Science Plan, have direct experiences of Japanese science, technology, and culture through joint research and interaction with 
researchers, students, and government officials in Japan. I hope that you will make full use of the experience and know-how you acquired in Japan and the network developed by this alumni association for future development of Indonesia and for further strengthening of our relationship. In closing, I'd like to express my sincere appreciation to all those who have contributed to today's inaugural alumni meeting, especially to the alumni participant, the Indonesian government and supporting universities and the JST. I wish the Sakura Science Plan further success and for even greater friendly relations between Japan and Indonesia. Thank you very much. Terima kasih banyak. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kanasugi Kenji, for the inspiring speech. Let's move to our second guest, Mr. Hedy Ahmadi, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Republic of Indonesia to Japan. To Mr. Hedy Ahmadi, the stage is yours. Ambassador, please uh, turn off your mic. Turn on your mic. I'm sorry. Already? Yeah, it's all clear. Yes. Okay. Uh, Excellency Minister Nadia Makarim, Excellency Ambassador Tanasuki Kenji, Excellency Dr. Laksana Trihandoko, Head of the National Research and Innovation Agency, uh, Director General of Sakura Science Exchange Program, Mr. Kisi Teruo, uh, and chairman and uh, of the Sakura Alumni Association, uh, Helen Christine, and other members of Sakura Alumni Association of uh, Indonesia, friends and participants. Selamat siang, minasang kajiwa, and good afternoon. First and foremost, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me to this online uh, gathering. Secondly, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to comment uh, Japan Science and Technology Agency or GSD as well as Sakura Alumni Association in Indonesia, SAI, for their important roles and contribution in promoting Indonesia-Japan relation through enhancement of the people-to-people -people connectivity. I'm confident that this young smart fellows taking part in this program will wonderful, with a wonderful experience in Japan, will one day become Indonesian leaders in the future. Excellencies and members of Sakula Alumni Association. The support of GSD indicates that Japan always put Indonesia in higher priority for human resource development. This alumni meeting actually clearly shows the close bond of friendship nurtured through this exchange program, and all of you have to be grateful with this program. Although the Sakura Science Exchange Program might have to limit itself to online exchange program due to the COVID-19 pandemic, yet I believe firmly that we all can still learn a lot from such online uh, programs. And Indonesia and Japan should, far, should further collaborate in converting challenges into opportunities in the current new normal life era. Indonesia and Japan will continue to broaden and deepen dialogue and cooperation in many sectors, including research and education. Let us hope that this pandemic situation will end soon. This alumni, alumni meeting is an excellent platform for sharing your experience and could bring among, about Indonesia and Japan closer in the area of science and technology. In addition, I would like 
the alumni members present today to keep in touch with your Japanese friend you found through this program. I strongly hope that more young Indonesian friends will be able to visit Japan to enjoy the real benefit of this precious exchange program in the near future. Last but not least, kindly accept my heartless congratulation to all member of the Sakura Alumni Association in Indonesia. And once again, a comment GSD for their great contribution to the success of the Sakura Science Exchange Program. I thank you very much. Terima kasih banyak. Arigato kusemas. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hari Ahmadi, for the empowering speech. Then we have our Minister of Education, Culture, Research, and Technology in Indonesia, Mr. Nadi Makarim, to deliver his speech for all of you. Let's hear the video message from Mr. Nadi Makarim. Excellencies, honorable speakers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This challenging situation we are in has showed us the important role of science in decision making. Evidence based decision making has become such a requirement to contain this disease and its related impact. And here, research as a tool plays a critical role. The knowledge capacity of a country does not depend only on internal innovation factors, but also on its social capital and its social capital within the global network. As countries around the globe are getting more connected, we need to stand together to face these global challenges. And we are being demanded to strengthen these international academic and research collaborations as a result of this need. Japan and Indonesia have been working together to build beneficial cross-country collaborations through the Sakura Science Program. Since it was first initiated in 2014, more than 2,000 students, researchers, and administrators have participated, placing Indonesia at fourth place after China, Thailand, and India for countries with the highest number of participants. I'd like to express our highest appreciation to the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology of Japan, also Japan Science and Technology Agency for providing invaluable opportunities for Indonesian students to learn from Japan through the Sakura Science Program. Ladies and gentlemen, prior to this event, I had the honor to meet virtually with your excellencies, Mr. Ryota Takeda and Mr. Kanasugi Kenji to discuss the opportunities to strengthen cooperation between Indonesia and Japan. In that regard, I'd like to invite more universities in Japan to partner with us for the Indonesian International Student Mobility Award Program. As one of our flagship programs in Campus Merdeka, our emancipated learning policies for higher education we're committed to building global collaboration and improve border crossing knowledge transfer and cultural exchange. We are partnering with more than 70 universities in 31 countries. Two universities in Japan have partnered with us in its initial release in 2019, and we are definitely welcoming wider collaboration with more universities in Japan. Ladies and gentlemen, through this meeting, we've learned that Japan and Indonesia are on the same page regarding how important cross-national collaboration is. I hope this agreement will ignite more initiatives from both countries in terms of research and education quality initiatives. Let's build a stronger Asia for a better and more sustainable future. Thank you all. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Nari Makarim for the inspiring speech. Then we have our Parliamentary Vice Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology, Mr. Mitani Hidehiro. Uh, let's hear the video message from Mr. Mitani. Hey, good afternoon. My name is Mitani Hidehiro, and I am the Parliamentary Vice Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, science and technology. Today, allow me to say a few words on the occasion of the second SAAI reunion and lessons from Japan. First, I'd like to express our deepest sympathies and condolences to the people of Indonesia who have been suffering from the spread 
of the COVID pandemic. We in Japan sincerely hope that this tragic situation will end as soon as possible. <clears throat> Almost every year, the leaders of our two countries pay mutual a visit to each other and Japan and Indonesia have built extremely close relations. At the summit meeting held last year, Prime Minister Suga expressed to President Joko the hope for our two countries to work together in many areas, including the fields of infrastructure development and human resource development in order to further strengthen the traditional friendship with our countries, which are maritime nations in the Indo-Pacific region. The Ministry of Education, Culture, Sport, Science, and Technology has also endeavored to strengthen relationships in the fields of education and science and technology, as well as person-to-person -person exchanges. In particular, the exchanges of the younger generation, such as those carry, carried out under the Sakura Science Exchange Program are of great importance when building cooperative ties in the field of science technology for the future. And I am incredibly pleased that this kind of opportunity has been arranged today to further these ties. Since the launching of the program in 2014, over 2,400 excellent young people have been invited to Japan from Indonesia through the Sakura Science Exchange Program. In addition, administrative officers who are supporting the administration of science and technology in, the, in Indonesia have also been invited to Japan. We are also delighted that of those young people invited through this program, over 200 have returned to Japan so far. And I am pleased to hear that uh, they are studying as international students at leading universities in Japan, including the Tokyo Institute of Technology, Osaka University, and Kyushu University. Even though we are still in the midst of a severe COVID pandemic, I strongly believe that person-to-person -person ties are the foundation for everything. Indonesia is a regional power that occupies 40% of the population, GDP, and land area of the ASEAN region. And is an important strategic partner for Japan. I believe that it is crucial to continue to develop a strong relationships of trust in the future based on the amicable relations that have been built thus far between Indonesia and Japan. Next, intends to provide support so that exchanges with Indonesia's excellent human resources will be increased even further through the Sakura Science Exchange Program, while also utilizing online exchanges in the midst of the COVID pandemic and looking ahead to a post-COVID world. And I hope that you will all continue to be interested in Japan and choose Japan as a destination for further study and improvement in the future. With exchanges continuing at various levels in business and industries and academia, the Sakura Science Exchange Program is of great significance as a grassroots exchange program. And we would like to ensure that the program is even more energized in the future. In closing, I hope 
This alumni meeting will prove to be extremely fruitful, and I wish all of you further success in your future activities. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for Mr. Mitani for the inspiring speech. Last but not least, we have Dr. Laksana Trihandoko, MSc, as the head of National Research and Innovation Agency, or BRIN, to give his speech. For Dr. Laksana Trihandoko, the stage is yours. Terima kasih. Thank you very much, Ma Olivia. Oh, sorry, I cannot turn on my video. Okay. Yeah. Terima kasih. <coughs> Uh, Excellencies, uh, Ambassador Mr. Kanatsuki Kenji, also Bapak Duta Besar, Bapak Heri Ahmadi, and uh, <coughs> Mas Nadi Makarim, Minister of Education, Culture, and Research and Technology, the Republic of Indonesia, and also Mr. Kisi Terio, the Director General of Sakura Science Program Headquarters of uh, Japan Science and Technology Agency, uh, Minasang, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, ohayo gozaimas, uh, very good morning for everyone, selamat pagi, salam sehat dan salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. First of all, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to Mr. Kuroki Sici, Singichi, the Director for Department of Planning and Management, Sakura Science Program Headquarters in Japan Science and Technology Agency, GST, for inviting me in the second uh, reunion of uh, Sakura Alumni Association in Indonesia. As one of the uh, Japanese graduate students, yeah, I am also the alumni uh, from Kumamoto and Hiroshima universities. Uh, I'm so proud that I could uh, participate and join uh, in this uh, prestigious event. So secondly, I do hope that uh, we are all in good health and keep happy, yeah, especially in this uh, challenging situation due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. I'm so grateful that we can meet uh, even virtually in this great occasion. So uh, taking this opportunity, I would like also to, on behalf of uh, the Indonesian government and people, uh, greatly appreciate the GSD yeah, for supporting and promoting science exchange program through Sakura Science Exchange Program since uh, 2014, right? Uh, involving almost uh, 2,000 uh, younger generations. So I do believe this program could maintain a close uh, and closer even yeah, relationship between in particular Indonesia and Japan and also among uh, scientists and also uh, younger our younger generations worldwide. So Excellencies, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the exchange program among scientists across the globe is, uh, in my opinion, is very, very important scheme to provide a platform for our scientists and also our younger generations to interact each other and to know each other that eventually uh, in the future, hopefully could lead to uh, real research collaborations. Again, uh, collaboration is always uh, started from personal relationship, mutual trust, and in some sense, uh, chemistry. Yeah, chemistry among the involved parties. So it is always about human, it is always about the personalities and also intercultural uh, communication. And sometimes uh, that is more than uh, about the science itself. Yeah? So it, it includes also uh, knowing uh, well the culture and social background of our counterparts. Yeah? So it is impossible to to understand well our counterpart is we if we don't understand uh, their cultures yeah and also how they think and how they uh, uh, interact uh, with another persons so in yeah in this sense uh, the, the sakura science exchange program is very very crucial for all of us to maintain and even to increase uh, research collaboration yeah among uh, our scientists in our countries in the future yeah because yeah because mo most of the younger generations uh, joining this webinar i believe uh, some of them are our future scientists yeah because the program uh, provides uh, great opportunities 
for the participants to know better uh, their counterparts in many aspects as a human. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, so please allow me in this great occasion to briefly also uh, introduce our new agency of Green, yeah, Badan Riset dan Inovasi Nasional in Indonesian language. Yeah, Green is uh, in English is uh, the National Research and Innovation Agency. Yeah? This uh, newly established agency was launched on April, yeah? just uh, almost three months ago, uh, 28 yeah, this year, as also the inauguration of myself as the first chairman of Green by uh, His Excellency the President Joko Widodo. So Green is uh, becoming a uh, governmental super agency actually in this country yeah uh, focusing on research in indonesia so because uh, we are we are uh, expected to actually print is intended to integrate all science technology and innovation programs and also at the same time governmental uh, research institution in indonesia yeah we are going to integrate Actually, we are now integrating all of the governmental research institutions across Indonesia. And on the other hand, Green is uh, expected to accelerate the uh, the improvement of uh, research and innovation ecosystem in Indonesia, yeah? including, of course, the global engagement on science, technology, and innovation. So after uh, integrating uh, all resources, uh, hopefully this year, yeah, either human resources, infrastructure, and also uh, research funding. In particular, uh, we have established what we call as uh, a new initiative, yeah? what we call as the uh, open platform, yeah? to open all of our research platforms, for, including for global users. Yeah? We will soon open the call for participation to join our global platforms, for either, uh, for instance, uh, the first one is the global pl platform for biodiversity research, global pl platform for maritime exploration, yeah, uh, using our fleet of uh, research vessels and also our space observations, which will be ready soon, yeah, also for global users. On the other hand, uh, we have also released uh, several schemes for researchers' mobility program, yeah, to encourage. Uh, global engagement and also global collaboration. So uh, in this opportunity, uh, I would like to invite all Indonesian uh, uh, Japanese alumni, yeah, including Sakura Science uh, Program alumni, as well as our Japanese partners to work with us in Green to jointly uh, conduct uh, any uh, research, yeah, which could lead to new innovations that hopefully will benefit both Indonesian and Japanese societies, as well as the global communities. So in particular for JST, yeah, uh, taking this opportunity in this uh, great uh, webinar, I, I would be very happy if we could discuss more to explore uh, cooperation between our uh, agencies. Yeah, as a start, I would like to propose, for example, a special exchange program uh, which could be uh, co-funded by both of us yeah, equally to extend or to expand the existing collaborations and maybe also to initiate new collaborations uh, between our scientists. Yeah. Uh, for, for example, in Indonesia in, in Indonesia side, we will involve uh, joint uh, researchers of Green and also uh, local uh, universities, uh, university professors and also the students, yeah, also their students and uh, facilitated, uh, facilitated by our infrastructure. Yeah? So they can conduct the research in Indonesia in uh, any platforms under uh, direct management of Green. Yeah? And also Green at least uh, is uh, committed to financing yeah, all expenses in Indonesia, either for uh, Indonesian or Japanese researchers. Yeah? I think we can discuss it more yeah, in more detail later on. Yeah? I, uh, uh, I, I'm looking forward to having a uh, more detailed and technical discussion with the SD in the near future. And finally, to conclude my remarks, I would like to invite all of us to keep uh, our healthiness, always uh, light up the positive energy and spirit, 
yeah, uh, keep being sparkling, but don't forget to maintain the cooperation or to start ident uh, identifying uh, future collaborative works yeah, to improve people healthiness and welfare, welfare in general. Yeah? So God bless uh, for all of us. Yeah? I wish you all stay safe and healthy. Kembali uh, masyur. Terima kasih. Arigato kosaimas. I pass uh, the floor back to the MC. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Laksana Trihandoko, for the inspiring speech. Now I will pass to Ms. Mutiara again. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Olivia. Now we will begin the keynote session. We will hear two insightful lectures from our speakers, and there will be a Q&A session afterwards. So for those of you who have questions to our keynote speakers, please write down your questions using the Q&A feature of the Zoom meeting. Okay, I will start by introducing our first keynote speaker, Dr. Mamoru Yamada. Dr. Yamada is the specially appointed professor for Graduate School of Science and Technology for Innovation at Yamaguchi University. As coordinator, Dr. Yamada organized GSP Asian Core Program 2008 until 2012. GSPS Core to Core Program 2014 till 2018, and GSTE Asia Joint Research Program 2017 until 2019. Dr. Yamada organized Sakura Science Exchange Program in 2016, and Just So Short Stay and Short Visit Program over one year, and Restack Dicti Short Term Visit Program at the year 2018 and 2019. So, um, good afternoon, Dr. Yamada. Okay, good afternoon, Dr. Yamada. We are very delighted to welcome you here. So without further ado, Dr. Yamada, your time is 10 minutes and the time is yours. Thank you very much for uh, introduction. Uh, ambassadors and ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure uh, to share time in this meeting. Can you hear me? Uh, it's okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. First of all, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to the organizing committee of SAAI to offer this opportunity of keynote speech. My university, Yamaguchi University, is located in the southern part of the main island of Japan and 1.5 hour by airplane and uh, five hour by ballet train from Tokyo. As you know, global warming is worldwide issues of this uh, century. Uh, we believe that the uh, application of tropical microbes can uh, contribute to solving some issues related to SDGs. Over 20 years, we organized three JSPS international core programs with Asian countries uh, focusing on tropical microbes and their application. And in the uh, core to core programs, 250 researchers of 70 universities from seven countries, including the Germany and England participated and conducted uh, 57 joint research uh, projects. Tropical microbes are thermal tolerant and resistant to various uh, stresses. So uh, this properties is very uh, useful and beneficial for the low cost bioconversions of biomass to useful materials such as uh, biofuels and thus new technologies can be developed using such thermal tolerant microbes. In addition, tropical microbes had experienced to adapt to high temperatures. So we can learn from tropical microbes to adapt 
global warming from genome analysis. On the basis of the achievements of the international core programs, we performed JSPS, uh, JST, the Asia Joint Research uh, Program uh, from 2017 to 2019 with Indonesian scientists uh, supported by Ristic Dikti and with uh, Thai and Lao scientists. And uh, developed new processes combat uh, Asian biomass to ethanol as a biofuel lactase for bioplastic acetate for a chemical material. I myself am mainly involved in ethanol production. This shows the general process of bioethanol production and the use uh, after introduced in uh, car. However, for two second, uh, gener uh, uh, for second generation uh, biomass or at the countryside or in emergency situations, new processes with uh, compact facilities need to be developed. Using some tolerant microbes, we can perform fermentations at 40 to 42 degrees Celsius, which uh, reduce cooling cost, hydrolysis cost, and prevent contaminations of other microbes, and also allow us to concentrate by distillation and uh, low pressure. After that, the ethanol is further concentrated by membrane separation, which is a uh, very low energy uh, than a uh, general distillation tower. Concentrated ethanols can be used after a conversion to hydrogen to the uh, energy. Or fermentation materials directly used to convert hydrogen to electricity. This show the first joint uh, seminar of core to core programs with 21 scientists from seven university in Indonesia and Professor Anton from the University of Brabija as a coordinator at Indonesian site. We held the 2016 Sakura Science Exchange programs with one student from Indonesia. This showed two recent Sakura Science Exchange programs at Yamaguchi University. This year, we also plan to organize a Sakura Exchange program. We have a seminar for uh, young researchers called the Young Science Seminar every year from uh, 2008. Many foreign young scientists, including Indonesian young scientists, participated. There is presentation competitions of research data in this seminar. So you can join and then obtain some award. As a short-term visit programs, that is Ristic Dikti program, we accepted 20 and 18 Indonesian young scientists at our university in 2018 and 2019, respectively. They also attended to this young scientist seminar. Next, I'd like to introduce our uh, research center of some tolerant microbial resources because I'm a, a director of this a center. This center consists of 
microbial fermentation group and environmental microbial group and the uh, microbial disease group. A center with three such uh, microbial groups is very unique and thus our center is probably only one in the world. So please visit to conduct joint research on some tolerant microbes with us. In addition to Young Scientist Seminar, we have an international symposium once every two years. Please participate our international symposium. Finally, I'd like to introduce my career. In particular, when I stayed in United States as a postdoc, I learned various different cultures, including scientific thinking. Basic, basing on this experience, I tried to organize several programs, including seminars for foreign young scientists, in addition to Japanese young scientists. So we welcome you to visit to university in Japan, and especially Yamaguchi University. Thank you for your kind attention. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the amazing presentation, Dr. Yamada. So to sum up, uh, you have already tell us about the research topic related to tropical microbes and how to use them. And also about many joint research opportunity related to various kind of research. So um, now I will be having the next speaker for this keynote session. Dr. Ahmad Ridwan Tresna Nugraha. Dr. Nugraha is the researcher on the Research Center for Physics at Indonesian Institute of Science. So, good afternoon, Dr. Nugraha. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can, can yeah, you hear my voice? Yes, I can hear your voice clearly. It's very nice to hear from you. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so without further ado, Dr. Nugraha, your time is 10 minutes. The time is yours. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, and High Excellency, the Ambassador, and so on. I'm Nugraha from Indonesian Institute of Sciences, or LIPI, which is now part of the National Research and Innovation Agency, or BRIN. It's a great honor for me to join the second SAI reunion, and I really thank the organizers from SAI, Sakura Science Club, and JST for inviting me to this event. Today, I would like to share my experience on theoretical and computational materials physics research in Japan and in Indonesia, and also about my career as a researcher or scientist, academician, whatever we call it. Before I proceed, I would like to briefly introduce myself again, especially about my academic life. Here it's my name, very long name, but many friends just call me Ridwan or Nugraha. I graduated from ITB Bandung 2008, and the same year I went to Tohoku University Sendai, for master course graduated in 2010 and doctor course graduated in 2013. At that time, I got financial support from the Japanese government or max scholarship. And in my final year of doctor course, I was very lucky to obtain JSPS fellowship. So I resigned from the max scholarship and continue with the JSPS fellowship. And this fellowship also allowed me to, to continue immediately for a postdoc job for one year. And uh, I was very lucky again in 2014, there was an offer to be an assistant professor in the Department of Physics, Tohoku University. And I then worked there for five years. And finally, in 2019, I joined LIPI as a researcher. So actually, almost one third of my life was spent in Japan. And surely the Japanese way of thinking partially shaped my life. However, it has its ups and downs. So especially in academic life, I should say this kind of life is quite hard. You can see here, it's a group photo of our lab, which is available publicly in the lab website. And at that time, in April 2009, it's my first seven months as a, a master course student in Japan. And at that time, al already it's a spring season, but I felt the environment was very cold. So I used a cap which covered my ears. And I tried to smile, but deeply in my heart, I actually felt a little bit depressed by a lot of tasks and adaptation as an international student with a lot of expectations. There have been so much struggle during the life in Japan, but eventually I could manage them with the help of my family, my supervisor and friends around. And 10 years later, I never imagined that I could still be standing besides my supervisor as an assistant professor or one of his closest colleagues. 
A funny thing is that I thought I already custom to all seasons in Japan at the time, but at, unfortunately I suffered from kafunsho or pollen allergy. So it's very similar to Japanese people. Anyway, since then I've been healthy and happy overall, and probably because I'm already mature to face many different kinds of problems. And time travels very fast. I'm now with Indonesian Institute of Sciences, or uh, more well known as LIPI in Indonesian language. It's the largest governmental research institute, and even it's getting bigger with formation of BRIN. And we have at least 22 research centers all over Indonesia, and I belong currently to Research Center for Physics. And in particular, my research is around theoretical and computational materials physics. And we might ask why we should do theoretical and computational research, and personally why I also like this research. Some of the reasons are outlined here. First, we can see that there are three pillars of science, two of which are theory and computation. So it's already two thirds of the science. And next, we can use theoretical and computational research as predictive tools that can be trusted when it's difficult to perform experiments. And in fact, we mostly only need pencils, papers, computers, and brain power. So therefore, not only in Japan, in Indonesia, this kind of research is potentially developing. And since I mentioned materials physics in the title of presentation, next question that comes naturally is why should we do materials research? A simple answer is because materials are everywhere. So it's very important to understand the properties of materials, not just the way they are fabricated. For example, from applications to large structures like the one we see here in commercial aircraft, the use of new composites <coughs> in these materials opens up many opportunities as well as the challenges that must be overcome. And on the other side of the length scale, very small one in the electronics industry, we see the get oxide here that must act in the billions of transistors we have in our laptops or computers. It's only a few atom sticks. So an understanding of materials properties in this scale is very essential. And material related challenges have also emerged in industry not traditionally associated with material science. For example, in the pharmaceutical industry, drug development recently requ requires the manipulation of active ingredients on molecular scale to increase their effectiveness. So in all of that industry, understanding how materials behave in relation to fundamental physics allows us for such developments and advances. And much more is required. So we need predictive tools with higher accuracy that makes it possible to make predictions more quantitatively. In this sense, materials theory and computation are an important tool in science. And we are currently in the midst of materials revolution, which really requires support from theoretical and computational research. And one particular role of theoretical and computational research is to predict and discover new materials. In fact, as a physicist, we already know quantum mechanics is the, is the fundamental science, which is almost complete to explain many different materials properties. And this will then give relation of the microscopic world to the macroscopic world. And recently with the advances in computing resources, the laws of quantum physics are already in forms of computer software. So even non-specialists can also explore and predict new materials properties. With the previously mentioned motivation in our lab, we've been exploring various research from thermoelectrics, electromechanics, and so on to the quantum foundation. In particular here, I would like to highlight thermoelectrics research, which is a conversion of heat to electrical energy and how we approach this subject with theoretical and computational physics tools. Thermoelectrics is related very closely to the so-called Seebeck effect due to the Thomas Seebeck who discovered it in the 19th century. And by putting a material between hot and cold regions here, we can generate electricity if the material is good enough to keep the temperature difference and quickly conduct the charges. If we can convert a lot of heat into electrical energy, then it would be very useful for energy sustainability in the future. And in this case, to say a material is good or bad as a thermoelectric material, we have some requirements related, related to the Seebeck effect. And scientists have defined at least two important parameters for quantifying thermoelectrics. One is the power factor, and the second is figure of merit. In particular, figure of merit ZT here is proportional to the power factor and also is related to the efficiency of the conversion. We see the graph that most of the thermoelectric materials highlighted here at room temperature still have efficiency lower than 10% with ZT near one. So this technology is still behind the photovoltaics or solar cells energies, which mostly have ZT near two. Therefore, the main motivation of researchers in this area is to obtain as large ZT or efficiency as possible. But how to do that? We were so puzzled with that problem, and fortunately in 2016, we came up with an idea that there exists an interplay between the confinement length L and another length scale, which we call as thermal wavelength lambda. 
and the graph and mathematics might be complicated, but the simple story with what we want to say is that the power factor in the nanostructure is only enhanced when we have the confinement length smaller than thermal wavelength. For example, in the case of silicon, experiment can only could fabricate a nanowire with L around 36 nanometer, but silicon thermal wavelength is very small, around four, so it's not yet sufficient. On the other hand, bismuth-based material has larger thermal wavelength around 32, around 32 nanometer. So with the confinement length around 24 nanometer, it's already sufficient to enhance the properties. And this research was highlighted in several websites. And we were very lucky that although this fact looks simple, no other scientists in the world at the time noticed it. And our group in Tohoku University actually had other interesting stories behind other research topics. But due to time limitation, I can only tell this story. And that year of 2016 was very memorable. And now I'm already in Indonesia. I still try to continue this kind of research in the highest level as much as I can. How to do that? So from my Japanese supervisor, I learned so much that it's important to keep the international collaboration. In fact, although we are theoretical and computational scientists with the channel of my supervisor, until now we've been collaborating with so many experimentalists in the world from Japan to USA and other places. And with this collaboration, we can keep our productivity and keep following the latest research trends. And secondly, it's also important to find or to make a supportive environment. And I'm now affiliating with Materials Theory and Computation Group at LIPI, and we have many researchers with a deep passion in fundamental research. So you can try visiting this website, QuasiLab, to find out more about our activities. And finally, it's important to keep a well-balanced life. In the beginning, I already mentioned my experience having depression in my first year in Japan, but then I should not expect that Doraemon will help me. I should not also waste my time to be too diligent or too hardworking so that I could not notice great discovery near myself. And we know as a scientist, the longer we live, the higher education we might have, but the fewer things we know about. So I would suggest, especially to myself, that if we want to survive as a scientist, we should enjoy our life in a good balance, physically, mentally, and so on. Do not focus too much at work on finding new things or getting a prize. And in Japan, I actually did a lot of things besides science, such as going to festivals, playing soccer, material arts, ping pong, and hiking. And same things I've been doing in Indonesia since 2019. I tried to keep this balanced life. But yeah, due, due to pandemics, recently I could not go much for outdoor activities. But at least with my family, we try to survive together at home. So that's all, that's all what I can share. Hopefully it will be useful. Thank you very much for listening to my talk. Okay, thank you very much for a very insightful presentation, Dr. Nugraha. So to sum up, Dr. Nugraha highlighting about theoretical and computational material physics research in Japan and Indonesia, and also about his very interesting experience as a researcher. Now, we will start the 10 minutes Q&A session there are many questions in the chat box for Dr. Yamada and Dr. Nugraha. So I would like to read the first question. The first question is for Dr. Yamada. So the question is, can we make our own bioethanol from home and how to make it to Dr. Yamada? Maybe you might answer this question. Okay. Uh, my my video is okay. Yes, uh, I can hear you clearly. Once I try, but we cannot uh, switch on. But anyway, uh, the question is: uh, We are collaborating with uh, Indonesian scientists, and then the uh, last uh, e Asia programs, we uh, try to isolate the useful uh, microbes. That is yeast that is uh, ethanol fermenting uh, yeast uh, from Indonesia. So if you can uh, do uh, such, such a way to get the uh, microbes, you can test it, their ability to how much the ethanol produce. And then the, uh, if that is uh, good enough, if compared to general, uh, like a Saccharomyces cerevisiae, uh, then uh, we can challenge the uh, more efficient uh, production or economic uh, production of ethanol. I hope this is an uh, answer. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Yamada. So we have another question for Dr. Yamada also. And then after that, I will pass it to Dr. Nugraha. Okay, the first question for the another question for Dr. Yamada is what are the advantage and disadvantage of using thermal microbes to harvest energy and 
Is there any difference between the usage of thermal microbes and other types of microbes? Um, we, we found the many uh, useful point. And then uh, problem is uh, the uh, current, the fermenting industry, they have no experience to use this uh, some tolerant uh, microbes. So we show the data and then we are appealing. So if they test it and the, uh, maybe many com uh, company can you use. And also we are collaborating with uh, Japanese uh, industry. They are starting. So we may success and then show the data to the your country, uh, maybe your country also some government, uh, the company maybe use this uh, technology. Sure, thank you. Thank you very much for the answer. Now I will move to Dr. Nugraha. Okay, so yes. Dr. Nugraha, your first question is very interesting, I mean. Um, the question is, how can we become a researcher? Is it that we must research every day or maybe you can explain it more? Uh, no, <laughs> we don't need to do research every day. Actually, in my daily life, I think only four hours I concentrate on calculation or yeah, my work. The remaining part is to make proposal and to supervise students and also to write emails and so on. Communications are mostly uh, occupying my daily life. So I, I think research is only four or five years, uh, five hours every day. So then we don't need to do research every day, just focus on what we are interested in. And to be a researcher, yeah, of course you must pass uh, the examination in your university. Yeah, you, you should be graduated with at least, I think master degree. If you are still in Indonesia, you can do that. But in Japan, um, the requirement is very strict. You should be at least uh, with doctor course degree if you want to be a researcher in university or an, in a research institute. It's still possible if you have master degree to be a researcher in R&D division in company, but maybe the, the uh, vacancy is not so much. Yeah, so I, I really suggest if you want to be a researcher, please at least uh, have a doctor degree. And in Indonesia, I think, yeah, we should... Uh, uh, encourage more students, more people to have higher degree. Yeah, that's all. Sure, thank you very much for your answer. I will move to another question for Dr. Nugraha, but it is in Indonesia, so I will um, read it in Indonesia. Is it okay, Dr. Nugraha? Yes, yes. Yes, you may answer it um, in Indonesia or in English. Um, it's up to you. Okay. The question is, um, kalau kita ingin kuliah di Jepang sebelumnya, apakah kita harus bisa berbahasa Jepang terlebih dahulu atau bisa belajar setelah diterima di sana? Apakah kita bisa survive, kita bisa bertahan hidup uh, untuk kuliah di sana hanya dengan bahasa Inggris? Yes, Jadi, that's ya. very interesting question. And I actually feel shameful to myself because I'm not so good uh, yet, even after 11 years in Japan to speak in Japanese. So my level is around entry or and two level, but not and one, so it's not so good. Uh, but yeah, uh, we can still survive with only English, and this really depends on your supervisor if you want to uh, go for graduate course. So if you only can speak English in the beginning, I really suggest you to find a supervisor who can also speak English, and the laboratory environment is international, so it's not difficult to adapt in that case. However, yeah, speaking Japanese, being able to understand the Japanese in daily life is very, very important. I, and I only realized that after I became an assistant professor. And at that time, yeah, I took an intensive course in Japanese. And uh, after that, yeah, I can pass some the Japanese examination. <laughs> so uh, if possible, please study Japanese as, as early as possible. Okay. But yeah, if you only can speak English, it's still okay. You can find some supervisors who, who are good at speaking English. And in that case, you can try to apply. All right, thank you for the answer, Dr. Nugraha. <laughs> so we still have several minutes to end up this Q&A sessions. Next, I will have one question for Dr. Yamada. Um, the question is, um, how to get job offers for international students after graduating from a Japanese university? Um, we all know that because of coronavirus, most people find it difficult 
to get a job, even for a local citizen. So how is your objection, Dr. Yamada? Okay, so <clears throat> I know the many uh, foreign students obtain the uh, job in, I, I mean, the position in university in Japan. And the, uh, they, uh, actually not so many, but the uh, currently uh, our uh, government uh, also encourage to accept foreign uh, researchers uh, to, to be the member in the university. So you have a chance to get the job. So the, uh, I think the, there are competitions, so, but you have a chance to apply. That's all, it's okay. All right, so um, we, we still have a um, chance to apply, but there might be a competition, right? Yes. Sure, thank you very much for the answer. So um, one more question for Dr. Nugraha. I will pass it to Dr. Nugraha. So the question, the question is, I will, uh, I will read. Okay. Um, the question is like, th like this. Oh. How can you motivate yourself when you feel down and depressed during your study in Japan? This is very interesting questions. Maybe you can answer it by your experience. Yes. Uh, the experience is more, more or less like a spiritual experience. So I'm not sure if it's related to all of you, but yeah, in my case, it's, mostly spiritual experience. At that time, I think I, I was far from uh, religion. So then I just try to pray and pray. And then I convinced myself that uh, the obstacle during my daily life as, an, as a student uh, can be, yeah, can, I, I can pass it with the help, not only from the help around, around, around myself, from my family, friends, but also from my uh how to say strong willingness to to overcome that problem and that the god will help me <laughs> so yeah it's more like a spiritual experience but i think basically if we don't have such a spiritual experience the support from your friends and families are very important so please don't don't forget to call your mother your father every day if you still have father or mother and also to call your family and talk with friends it's very important do not uh, don't be too selfie, selfish. <laughs> uh, just stay in your apartment every day. Yeah, it actually occur, happens to me. I, I, how to say, I was isolated in my apartment for seven days, like, yeah, like seven days without going out. So then it just makes the situation more terrible. Okay, so it's important to talk so much and then, yeah, pray and also make a balance, <laughs> as I mentioned in the uh, final slide of my presentation. Yeah, I think that's my suggestion to get get off, get rid of the depression. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Nugraha, for the answer. So, everyone, this is the end of Q and A session. And once again, thank you very much, Dr. Yamada and Dr. Nugraha, for on answering all of the questions. It is pleasure to have you here with us. We hope that we could maintain these warm relationships with Dr. Nugraha from Indonesian Institute of Science and Dr. Yamada from Yamaguchi University. I will pass it to Ms. Alivia once again. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Mutiara. Uh, our next agenda will be delivered from SIM members who want to share their meaningful experiences during the Sakura Science Program. First, we have Ms. Maya as one of the SPS Research Fellow or DC2 at the University of Tsukuba at the National Institute of Material Science during Graduate School. Without any further ado, let's welcome Ms. Manzaya Nekmina to the stage. Ms. Maya, the time is yours. Oh, thank you for your very kind introduction. So firstly, I would like to thank all the organizers for inviting me to be this event. And it is an honor for me to be here to share my studying experience in Japan. So uh, firstly, I would like to introduce myself a little bit. So uh, my name is Maya. And uh, before uh, I came to Japan, so I did my bachelor degree in Kajamada University in Tokyo. And then after that, I decided to continue the master course to University of Tsukuba by uh, uh, using the NIMS Junior Researcher uh, Program. 
And then after I graduated from master course, I continued to the doctoral course and still uh, by using the NIMS junior researcher scheme. But uh, fortunately from the from my second year, from this year, I uh, got the DC2 GSPS uh, fellowship. So now I'm working in the material science and engineering uh, major. So I belong to the smart polymer group in National Institute for Material Science. And this is my lab. So here uh, I'm working on the biomaterials research field. So basically uh, my lab is focusing on the application of materials for the biomedical application and for a therapeutic application. So uh, then I would like to tell you a little bit why I decided to revisit Japan uh, after uh, I finished my bachelor degree. So in 2015, I was very uh, lucky. So I could join this uh, science and technology experience course or the Sakura Science Program organized by the JSC. Uh, at that time, uh, me and uh, this uh, fellow from University of uh, Gajah Mada, we visited the Shizuoka University for 10 days. And after that, uh, I feel like it is a very awakening experience because I realized that in Japan, there are many researchers doing the multidisciplinary research. And then also they are doing the start stage of the art research by using the cutting edge technology. So that's why after that, I decided to revisit Japan to pursue my dream goal. Because I think uh, Japan uh, is a good environment uh, for us to train ourselves to be a professional researcher with all the uh, resources. Uh, when I came here at first uh, for master course, actually I didn't quite experience uh, any like culture shock, but there are several things that uh, quite how to say make me wonder and. After that, uh, I stay here until now, I realized that in Japan, we need to behave well. I mean, manners really matter. And also there is one thing that I really uh, amazed. I mean, uh, the people surrounding me, they are very shokenmei, uh, it's like they are very passionate. So here, uh, if we want to uh, survive living in Japan, I think we should really care about uh, manners. Uh, it means, uh, for example, we uh, have to greet people and then we need to uh, consider or be aware of our surroundings. And the next thing is that we should also uh, show appreciation to people. And uh, the second one about this Ishoken Mei is like uh, the people surrounding me, they are very, very passionate with their work. And I found out that uh, maybe it's because they have their already they, they found their ikigai or like purpose of life. So that's why uh, they always do everything like wholeheartedly or they give 100% effort. So uh, that's uh, the thing that I'm really amazed of. And then the next thing is I would like to share a little bit about my lab. So in our lab, uh, I was, I was very fortunate to uh, be here because uh, we have a lot of activities and uh, maybe that's why I didn't quite have any culture shock. So uh, besides that, uh, our uh, supervisor always encourage us to keep improving ourselves and keep improving our ideas. But for example, we always have this kind of brainstorming uh, meeting uh, regularly every month. And then uh, we also have this kind of outreach activity where we will introduce about our lab research to the kids. We went to elementary school and then we went to the kids event to introduce about our research, which is about smart polymers. And then uh, besides that, we uh, went to uh, many conferences every year. And also we have this kind of barbecue event. And then we always uh, eat, eating out, I mean, like every week or every month. So it's very nice uh, to be here. Because uh, at first, in my mind, before I came here, uh, I would need to do like research all the time without caring about other things. But then my supervisors uh, made me realize that we need to have this life and also work or research balance. So yeah, we have to do research really seriously, but besides that, we need to have fun and then uh, socializing with people. And that's very important. 
And uh, next, I would like to tell you about my impression or my experience in uh, conducting research in the National Institute like uh, in Linz. So uh, I realized that the research here are uh, very, very society oriented research. And in our lab, uh, for example, uh, my supervisor already have one patent. It's like a nanofiber that loaded with drugs to treat the nerve injury. So they already started the clinical trial and uh, it's like we collaborated with the Japanese pharmaceutical company, Nihon Zilki. And then the second one on 2019, so we had a crowdfunding activity to, for our uh, wearable artificial kidney uh, research. So the dream is we want to make the portable uh, artificial kidney. And at that time, uh, we succeeded uh, this crowdfunding activity. And also from 2019 also, our group uh, had successfully uh, collaborated with the L'Oreal Japan uh, as in the smart polymers project to uh, create a better uh, product. And now a little bit about my research. So uh, this is what I am I what I am doing here since master course. So the thing is, uh, our dream is we would like to create the material based cancer therapy instead of the uh, conventional uh, drug therapy, which is uh, very expensive. But firstly, before that, the understanding the mechanism is very important. And this is what I am doing. And Basically, uh, you know, uh, in the real physiological condition, uh, breast tissue has a mechanical properties. And if the breast uh, has cancer, and usually the mechanical properties will become higher, much higher. So that's why when uh, people undergo the breast screening, if they found the lump, then uh, they will, uh, how to say, check uh, in further to check if that lump is cancer or not. And it means that uh, actually, in our body, the cell is uh, interact with each other and supported by a glue called make, uh, extracellular matrix or EDM. And this mechanical properties of EDM is really important in driving the cellular fate of cells. So here, by the help of the material science, I would like to create a platform to study the breast cancer in deeper uh, to realize our goal. Uh, creating the material-based therapy. And next one, uh, this is a very important uh, Japanese way of thinking. So in our lab, uh, we really rely on this principle, which is called Hoden So principle. Hoden So, actually in English, it means spinach. And it is an acronym of three words, which is Hokoku, or means report, Renraku, contact, Sodan, consult. So it means that uh, we need to maintain our communication. Uh, in, for example, in myself, in the lab, we always have the progress report and we always share uh, our information about everything uh, in our lab by using the line group and so on. And it means that uh, interpersonal communication or uh, relationship between human is very, very important because when we have a problem in experiment, uh, how to say it, it become easier when we uh, have a good relationship with the people surrounding us. So we can cut the time for uh, solving the problem. And that's why manners really matter. And then uh, about the current situation. So yeah, unfortunately we have this COVID-19 situation since um, maybe last year. So, but uh, fortunately here, uh, we can still keep going on uh, conducting our research. Uh, but at first, yeah, you know, we had like two months of uh, lockdown. I mean, we didn't go to the, we cannot go to the lab for two months. But after that, gradually, uh, and then until now, uh, we can still uh, come into the lab like normally. But of course, by uh, how to say avoiding the decreases, wearing masks, and uh, applying the basic prevention measure for the COVID-19. And maybe it's because uh, my uh, lab is located in Ibaraki Prefecture, which is uh, currently is not declared as an emergency state. So uh, my schedule or my daily life schedule is not uh, greatly affected by this. And basically I spend my day uh, almost um, a whole day in the lab. But, uh, but yeah, sometimes I also go home early 
But in the lab, uh, of course, it's uh, not all about the serious experiment. I also have like uh, a lot of discussion with my uh, friends or also my mentor. And yeah, we have a lot of fun here. So although uh, our lab score time is from 10 to 5 every day, uh, our supervisor is very flexible. So as long as uh, we show up and show the results uh, of our research uh, every uh, week in every meeting, so it's basically uh, the, how to say, it's up to us uh, like when we can, we want to come to the lab. So yeah, it's very nice. So maybe uh, that's all uh, for now. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, contact me or yeah, to ask me later. Thank you. Okay, thank you for sharing your valuable experiences, Ms. Maya. So now I will give the MC back to Ms. Mutiara. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Olivia. Now let's hear another precious story from our member, Mr. Aji Resindra Widya who currently affiliated as a doctoral student at Systems and Control Engineering Department, Tokyo Institute of Technology in Okutomi Tanaka Lab. So, Mr. Aji, the stage is yours. Uh, thank you very much for the brief introduction. Let me share my screen. Oh, can you see my screen? Oops. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, thank you. Uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining this session in the second Soviet Union and also lesson from Japan. Uh, my name is Sajira Sindravija, and I was asked to share my experience during my study in Japan. So without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, I would like to introduce uh, myself. My name is Sajira Sindravija, and I am a third year PhD student in Tokyo Tech. And I actually have just did my uh, PhD defense last week. Uh, and also uh, a little bit fun fact about my name. So Aji in Japanese means uh, it's actually one of the name of a fish. So my, my name is really easy to remember for Japanese people. And some people call me fish boy. Uh, so basically, uh, my research is about computer vision and deep learning, mainly for 3D reconstruction. And I use it for uh, medical, uh, medical images, for example. Uh, basically, in my research, we reconstruct the 3D model of the stomach for, to, to help the doctor for better visualization and also better diagnosis. Uh, if you're interested uh, in more detail about the research, you can go to uh, this URL. So that's about my research. And uh, this is not really important actually. So, but let me share about the experience, uh, my experience during my study in Japan. So first of all, why Japan? So uh, basically since I was a kid, like for example, since six years old, I usually watch cartoon uh, every Sunday uh, from television. And that time I saw, like, for example, a Gundam cartoon at, I thought that, oh, being a Gundam pilot is so cool. So that's why I choose to, I want to go to Japan for my uh, study. But actually, actually that is a joke. So for real, uh, so I, I was actually in the same uh, Sakura Science prog program with uh, Maya in 2015. And that time we went to uh, uh, Shizuoka University, Amamatsu campus. And even though Amamatsu is a, uh, small city. Uh, the city is like really connected. Uh, like the transportation is really connected, and it's even though it is small city, uh, there are many uh, uh, beautiful technology there. So I thought that uh, okay, uh, I decided I will go back to Japan for my master degree, and because uh, from that experience, I think that Japan is known for a country of innovation. It is actually a, also a safe country and I want to know more about the people and also the, the culture. And actually Japan has a lot of uh, scholarship uh, options. So that's why I choose Japan for my next uh, destination of study. And, and actually there are some uh, a little cultural challenge uh, when I first came to Japan. Uh, first of all, I was admitted as 
in the international graduate program in Tokyo Tech and I thought that, oh yeah, English is enough. But actually for my personal experience, uh, so, so I didn't really uh, prepare for Japanese language back then. So I didn't really understand uh, hiragana, katakana at all. So, but after I came to Japan, uh, even though I can communicate well with my professor and also friends in lab, uh, unfortunately for some uh, things like grocery, uh, buying grocery, uh, you still need Japanese. So yeah, uh, that's what my what one of my cultural challenge. And the second one is the image of Samurai 7-Eleven. So there, there, there is a running joke that Japanese people like to work from 7 p.m., 7 in the morning and until 11 p.m. In, at night. So I thought that, well, I cannot, I, I cannot keep up with them. And there is also a culture that you can't really go back home uh, before your professor or supervisor go back home. But yeah, as uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Ahmad Ridwan said that it, it is very important to keep a work-life balance, but I don't really think about it much now, uh, as long as I can keep the results. And also about making friends. So uh, Japanese people like to drink much. I mean, there is a, a, a term called nomikai. So basically uh, it is one of the best way to make friends with people, uh, uh, Japanese people. But uh, since I don't drink, so this is another challenge for me. And actually nomikai is so, so expensive for, for me. So yeah, I, I have to find another way to make friends or to connect with Japanese, uh, other Japanese people, or uh, yeah, basically people around around me. So that are the cultural challenge. But uh, for me, the best takeaway is that people here really think about others. So for example, uh, if you walk your dog and your dog uh, piss or poop uh, on the street, you have to take the poop so that it do not, it doesn't litter the, the road. Uh, and also uh, I have a driving license here and it is so different. It's like the experience of driving in, in Japan and in Indonesia is really different. And uh, it is not stressful when I drive here because yeah, uh, people here really uh, protect the manner on the road. And about research experience, so if I have to summarize my research experience in one in one pictures, it would be this. So it is actually yeah uh, always uh, running uh, uh, between me deadline and paper. So we are trying to catch each other. Uh, and about my daily research activity, so I log my uh, time arriving on campus and also time living. So uh, not like. Uh, Miss Maya. So I actually only spend around six to seven hours in, in lab because uh, I can do my work from home because I only need the computer to work. So I usually came to lab around 11 and go back home around six or seven in, in, the, in the evening. Uh, but sometimes, uh, since my research meeting is actually on Monday, I have, sometimes I have to spend my uh, weekends on lab. So yeah, but it's kind of balance. And of course there are obstacles in research, like the first one is language. Uh, as my Japanese language get better, uh, I think I can open up uh, more collaboration and actually uh, more like understanding between, between people and other collaborators. Like I am now collaborating with doctors and uh, it is very important uh, that I can speak or that I can convey what I want to do or what is my research is about to, to them. And sometimes I get bored, like because uh, there are times when even though we try hard, we cannot get a good result. But as my professor said, uh, uh, if you get bored or you, you do not, you cannot get a better res best, uh, good result, like you, you can take a rest or talk with other people to gain a new perspective because it is actually uh, very important like to take rest and keep your health and also keeping up with others results because uh, in my field, uh, the, uh, the pace of the research produced is really neck breaking and it is very uh, important to 
like create a small uh, research uh, uh, research uh, like study group so so that we can teach each other about what what is the newest things in our field. I think so uh, about how pandemics affect my research. Uh, fortunately, except that every meeting is held online, nothing changed about my research. So. Uh, I cannot. Uh, I don't really have anything to share about how pandemics affect my research because I I believe I am quite lucky enough that there is no effect in my research. So maybe uh, the other people have uh, some takeaway about this. So yeah, I think that's all from me. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you have any question, you can contact me, uh, or also uh, ask from the Q and A section from uh, using this uh, Zoom function. So thank you very much. All right, thank you for sharing your interesting experience, Mr. Aji. Now, last but not least, we will hear another meaningful story from our SAI members. Mr. Dieno Diba, a master's student Department of Earth and Planetary Science, the University of Tokyo, and also the alumni of 2019 GST Sakura program to Earthquake Research Institute at the University of Tokyo. All right, so Mr. Diana, the screen is yours. All right, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, His Excellencies, invited and keynote speakers and the participants. Selamat siang, minasang konnichiwa. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First, I would like to uh, say that it is a pleasure for me to have a time in this meeting. So I thank the organizer SAAI for having me in this meeting. I'm going to share my experiences of studying in Japan. My name is Dieno Diba. Uh, here is a short introduction about me. I am an alumni of 2019 JST Sakura Science Program. Uh, currently, I'm a second year master student at the Department of Earth and Planetary Science, University of Tokyo, and I am receiving a scholarship from Indonesian government. I am also a lead representative, a coordinator of the PPI Todai, Indonesian Student Association at the University of Tokyo. Uh, here are the contents of today's my, uh, my presentations today. I'm going to start with the motivation, then the Sakura Science Program, studying at Todai, PPI today and lesson learned from the Japanese. First, the motivation of studying in Japan. So why I choose Japan for uh, the place of my study. I have a personal interest and background. So I studied actually physics in undergraduate study, but I am interested in geophysics, such as uh, these figures, layer earth, plate tectonics, or ring of fire, earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunami, etc. So I am interested in this kind of mechanism and I would like to understand uh, how those natural disasters, for example, can occur. What was the what is the process behind those natural disasters, for example? So I have that uh, personal interest and background. But why Japan? Geologically, Indonesia and Japan have a similarity. So my Indonesian friends here I believe uh, we still remember this event, 2004, uh, big tsunami in Aceh. Devastating, event, devastating events uh, occurred in Sumatra, North North Sumatra. And the Japanese is still well remembering this event, 2011 Tohoku earthquake. So these events have similarities. Great earthquakes resulted from plate tectonics. But why I choose Japan to study, though, uh, these two events occurred anyway, because the response by Indonesia and by Japan is different. So Indonesian Meteorological and Geological Agency reported in early 2019, Indonesia had 175 earthquake recording devices, while Japan, which is five times smaller in area, had more than 1,200. So I think we can learn something, something from Japan. And this is the events that the program that introduces me about Japan. 2019 Sakura Science Research Internship. 
this was a short research at the Earthquake Research Institute, University of Tokyo. So each student was supervised by a horse researcher. There were three Indonesian students, including me and Miss Dian. Uh, I believe she's here. We visited interesting places and I got new friends from various countries. This is an experience I will never forget. And more so, I got a very kind and supportive host researcher at that time. And yes, now he becomes my academic supervisor. So I maintain good communication with him. And at the end, I can be a student in his research group for now. So all in all, this program was a huge stepping stone for my study. And studying at the University of Tokyo, I'm taking master course for two years at the Department of Earth and Planetary Science. My research is about uh, the structure beneath Tohoku, Japan. So very close to the area where 2011 earthquake occurred. So uh, we studied the, we tried to understand the mechanism behind those great earthquakes and the earthquakes following that earthquakes. So yeah, in short, that is my research for now. But I want to emphasize on this. Based on my observations, U Tokyo and I think many other Japanese universities have the following items that bring a decent atmosphere for successful study for the students. First, a weekly uh, report progress in a research group among the students and professor and small-scale scientific meetings where students present the progress and receive feedbacks, and a good connection between students and supervisor uh, in the laboratory or out of laboratory. So basically, we can discuss about everything with our supervisor. This is the culture, academic culture in Japanese university based on my observation. And this is very important to motivate the students. And uh, other than academic activity, I am also participating in a student association. There are some uh, activities, uh, for example, Gogatsusai or May Festival. In this festival, we usually promote our cultures to the Japanese. Also, some vacations uh, during some seasons. Uh, Pepe Itodai Talk, a discussion with a uh, rather famous person and a weekly podcast. In this pandemic, we introduce our weekly podcast on Spotify since we cannot uh, run any uh, kind of uh, offline activities. It is difficult. So yeah, I think academic and life balance is very important. And I want to close this talk by saying this. So after all of this time, I have, what have I learned the most from Japanese? Uh, I think this one is uh, the answer, Ikigai, the purpose of life. Ikigai is basically intersection of uh, these four quadrants. And it is very important for us to know what is our Ikigai, what is our purpose of life, what we want to do, what we have to do, and how to achieve that goal. And if you are interested in this topic, uh, you can uh, read this book, Ikigai, Blue Cover by Hector Gracia. So concluding remarks, uh, first to study in Japan, you need to have a strong motivation. You have to look for opportunities. Number two, academic and life balance is very important. And number three, I learned a lot about Japanese sense of purpose in their lives. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Terima kasih. Arigato gozaimasu. All right, thank you for sharing your experience, Mr. Dieno. It is very interesting to hear the experiences from all of our SAI members. I hope that we can learn a lot from the SAI members' presentations. So now, we will have an information session about study and work in Japan from our next speaker, Ms. Rinjani Hanani Suyu. Ms. Rinjani is the staff of Japan Student Service Organization in Indonesia, or abbreviated JASO. She is going to give a short introduction about JASO for 10 minutes and will be answering the questions in the following 10 minutes Q&A session with previous speakers from SAI members. So for those of you who have questions related to study and work in Japan, please write down your questions using the Q&A features of this Zoom meeting. All right, so thank you, Ms. Rinjani, for being here with us. Okay. Um, thank you. 
Yes, I can hear you clearly. Okay, I will be giving the stage to you, Ms. Rinjani. You have 10 minutes for the next presentation, so the time is yours. Okay, thank you for having me. I will share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Konnichiwa. I am Rinjani uh, of Japan Student Services Organization. Thank you for having me in the second SAAE uh, reunion event at JASO. We provide a variety of information regarding studying Japan. So today, I would like to give you the basic information on studying Japan. For start, there are five reasons to study in Japan. The first is world-class educational standards. The biggest appeal of studying abroad in Japan is the opportunity to learn about cutting-edge technology and science. And the second one is the international environment. Studying abroad in Japan offers you the chance to learn about not just Japan, but also the world. And more and more Japanese institutions are offering degree program in English. And the third one is affordable academic fees. Academic fees in Japan are much lower than in the United States or the United Kingdom. There are also various financial support programs for international students in Japan. And the fourth one is the rich nature and culture. And the last, it's the employment in Japan. Japan is hiring more and more talented international students regardless of their nationality to work in Japan. And this is the data of international students as of May last year. So they are about 280,000 international students that studying in Japan. So to gather information, I recommended the booklet named Study in Japan Basic Guide. As the first step of gathering information, you can get the summarizing information about study in Japan from this booklet. So the PDF version of this booklet is available on Study in Japan website. So besides the Study in Japan basic guide, you can obtain a lot of information from our Study in Japan website. You can find our website by searching Study in Japan. Next, for the school, there are five types of higher education institution in Japan accepting international students. In university, at undergraduate and graduate level, graduate school, and the second one is the junior college. Next is professional training college and college of technology or COSEN. Besides all these higher education institution, there are also Many international students studying Japanese language at Japanese language institutes in Japan. Next, Japan. Japan has quite a number of higher education institutions. I'm sure that you will find a school that fits your interest and objective for your future career. And how to choose the school? There is a school search function on studying Japan website using this Excel sheet. You can search schools based on your preferences such as field or of study or location of the school. So please use it as the reference and find a school that fits your interest and your objective. In addition, we will hold our study in Japan virtual fair in August through September. In this virtual fair, universities, graduate school, professional training college, and Japanese language institutions, in total about 100, 100 institutions will participate. You can receive explanation from the staff and chat with them to ask questions. So if you are interested in this fair, please visit the event website. Next is for the application to uh, university and higher education in Japan. Except for graduate school, eligibility for admission to higher education institution is 12 
years of schooling and completion of the secondary education. Preparation for the school's admission are shown here. So after you decide the schools you wish to attend, please be sure to check admission guideline. Academic year in Japan usually starts in April or some schools start in September or October. And then let's next to the take a look at graduate school. Courses at graduate schools are divided to two parts, master program or first phase of doctoral program of two years and the second phase of doctoral program of three years. You may admit it directly to regular degree program, but in some cases, international students are required to go through a non-degree program called research student. Next, if you would like to apply a graduate school, it's very important to write a good and comprehensive research plan. When searching for school, it's also advisable to identify a possible academic advisor who are doing research that's similar or related to yours. And for the required examination, examination for Japanese university admission for international student or EJU is one of the admission tests required for the international student to university at undergraduate level. So you can find more information about EJU in Study in Japan website. Next, how about the language? In general, lecturers, lectures in Japanese university, especially at the undergraduate level are conducted in Japanese language. So in order to follow the lectures, your command of Japanese language is expected to 200 to 250 of EJU score, excluding the score of writing section or N1 or N2 of GLPT. So in most cases, international students study Japanese language at Japanese language institutes first before applying to the universities. And if you are applying all, uh, the course in English or English degree, English language proficiency is required to as shown in this slide. But please make sure to confirm again about required scores on the latest application guideline of the school of your choice. Next, about the expenses. According to our survey, average monthly living cost of international student in Japan is about 850 US dollars. And this table shows the tuition fee for students who were accepted by Japanese higher education institution as regular student. And this slide is average tuition fee of Japanese studies for foreign students at Japanese language institution. For financial aid, there are four kinds of scholarship for international students. The first one is Japanese government or mixed scholarship. Next is Monbuka Gakusho Honor Scholarship for Privately Financed International Student. The third one is Student Exchange Support Program. And the last one is a Local Government or a Private Foundation Scholarship. And you can find uh, of the scholarship from this scholarship from pamphlet. You can get the PDF version in Study in Japan website. So please look for the scholarship which you are eligible for. And most of Japanese university has, has on-campus scholarship and tuition exemption or reduction system to for international students. So you can also find uh, the file in Study in Japan website. And the last, the Japanese government is a encourage uh, the international student to stay and work in Japan after their graduation. As you can see in this graph, the number of international students who find employment at Japanese company is increasing every year. So if you have any further information or further question, please do not hesitate to contact us at email by info at or by WhatsApp 
to uh, 0 to 1 to 5 to or Facebook and Instagram at jaso.indonesia. And don't forget to join our Studying Japan Virtual Fair. So maybe this is the pre presentation for, from me. Thank you for your time. Arigatou gozaimashita. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Rinjani, for highlighting several things, right? Um, we have learned from the various reasons to study in Japan and how to pursue studying in Japan and also the work opportunities in Japan. Now we will start the 10 minutes Q&A sessions. There are several questions in our chat box. I'll start from a um, question from, for Ms. Rinjani. So I will read the question. Hello, I'm Dewey, one of SSP alumni in 2019. I want to ask Jesso, I'm really interested in studying Japanese at Japan. What is the term and condition and how much should we prepare for the fee and living costs? Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, to study Japanese language in Japan Language Institute, start from 2019, uh, the immig immigration of Japan uh, has new rules that uh, state that to study in Japanese Language Institute, the international student must have uh, GLPT scores uh, by N5 or uh, the explanation letter from the Japanese Language Institute in Indonesia that state that the student has already uh, learned Japanese uh, around 150 hours so this uh, this the JLPT and Lima or the explanation letter is a must from now so you might to prepare the JLPT and five scores or uh, your course in Japanese in Japanese Language Institute in Indonesia before you go to Japanese Language Institute in Japan and also about the fee in Indonesia it's I think uh, from one year course it will take around um, juta rupiah for one year school to academic fees in Japanese language institute. All right, so thank you for the answer, Ms. Rinjani. Next, we'll move to another side members for all the three side speakers, Ms. Maya, Mr. Aji, and Mr. Daniel. You might um, turn on your video to answer the questions. Okay, thank you very much. I will start from Ms. Maya, the question for Ms. Maya, I will read it first. Okay, hi Ms. Mazaya, I want to ask about the materials engineering job in Japan. Are there a lot of materials engineering job vacancies, especially in the automotive and steel industry for international graduate students? Is it convenient for just half a master's degree to apply for an engineering job in the Japanese industry? All right, so... Oh. You may answer the question, Ms. Maya. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much for the question. So, yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, here, uh, especially in the National Institute for Material Science also, uh, many researchers here uh, also, uh, they are studying or developing the materials for the automotive uh, industry or, you know, like airplane and things. So uh, I think uh, material science and engineering uh, job prospects uh, is really promising because it's really multidisciplinary and we have a lot of applications also. Thank you. All right, thank you for the answer. I will move to Mr. Aji. So the question for Mr. Aji, I will write it. Uh, I will, sorry, I will read it. 
So dear Mr. Aji, it's a pleasure listening to your presentation about your experience in graduate study. My name is Anissa and I have an interest to pursue my PhD study in Japanese University. Uh, my research interest is about Internet of Things and machine learning. Is there any information regarding PhD opportunity in Japan, especially in Tokyo Tech? What do I need to prepare to achieve this goal and what kind of stuff should I do first? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Anissa, for your question. So based on my personal experience, uh, if you want to study in uh, one of the Japanese universities, let's say, one of the best way to find a vacancy is uh, by contacting the supervisor directly. Uh, maybe Mr. Geno or Ms. Maya can add to my answer, but because uh, it is basically uh, based on my uh, uh my experience. So the best way is uh, first you search, like if, for example, you want to study in Tokyo Tech. So you search like the lab with uh, the name of the lab, like which do that does like uh, Internet of Things and also deep learning. And then after that, uh, you can, you have to contact the professor directly uh, and by introducing your, your, yourself and also uh, stating your intention that you want to be their students. So that is, in my opinion, is the first step. And then about what you have to prepare is, uh, you have to write your email as good as possible. And you have to kind of prove to the professor, uh, to the candidate professor that you are worthy for them like for example uh, by attaching your cv and also uh, at least uh, you have uh, for example uh, read or study about the research of of what actually they are doing in their lab so i think that's uh, my answer Okay, thank you, Mr. IG, for your answer. I will move to Mr. Dieno. So the question for you is, um, I will read it. So Mr. Dieno, in your opinion, what things can be learned from Japan that can be implemented in vocational high school in Indonesia? Uh, it's a challenging question. I've never been to vocational high school, but I, I have a friend uh, in Japan, Indonesian friend who is studying in a vocational design school, graphic design school. And uh, based on my observation on him, um, he he focused on his uh, his study. Uh, no, no, no. So the portion of the study is like 50-50. So 50% in class and 50% uh, practical outside of class. So I don't know whether this uh, kind of system can be applied to any other vocational school, but based on my observation, he rarely go to his uh, school, but he often make a portfolio to uh, distribute. So maybe this can be applied to other vocational schools. So more practical than theory. Thank you. All right, thank you for the answer, Mr. Dieno. So once again, thank you to our speakers for all of the answers. And we are sorry due to limited time, not all questions from you can be answered during our live sessions. So dear all fellow participants, we finally reached the last agenda of Sai reunion and lessons from Japan. Let's hear the most awaited announcement of the Sakura Alumni Association in Indonesia which is the new coordinator's announcement. So to Miss Helen, I will give it the stage to you. All right. Okay, for Miss Helen. Okay, uh, hello. Can you hear me clearly? Uh, yes, Miss Helen. Okay, so... Uh... Thank you, Alice. Uh, thank you, Mutera. So I'll start. Um, today, I would like to announce the new main coordinators of SAI. But before that, I would like to especially say thank you to all current SAI coordinators for your endless cooperation and support. For 20 months, I've been working with 15 amazing people. So uh, you can turn on your camera.
Okay. Uh, it is such a pleasure to work with the Vice President, Mr. Mohamed Fadel, and all 14 main coordinators, Mr. Ahmad Shafi, Mr. Ahmad Adi Sulianto, Ms. Olivia Zaharatu Ilmi, Mr. Aprianto, Ms. Dian Kusumawati, Ms. Dina Satyaningrum, Mr. Ferdinand Hieronymus, Ms. Ika Arofa Satyawati, Mr. Lalu Faizin, Ms. Maryam Alubu, Ms. Ms. Tauzana, Ms. Mirnawati Ramli Ahaya, Ms. Mutiara Aulia Firdausi, and Ms. Jatia Ramadani. Thank you for being the pioneers of SAI and making it one of the most active SSC associations. I would also like to thank all GST staff, especially Ms. Kanako Nisibayashi, Ms. Nufam, and all GSTEC staff, especially Ms. Erika Kaozoe, Ms. Shakai Shuko, for helping SAI hold various activities. I wish you all success. So for uh, SAI coordinators, please turn off your camera because I will introduce the new coordinators of SAI. From the selection of uh, the new SAI main coordinators, we have five candidates. The first one, Ms. Farhana Ibrahim Chuaib, an undergraduate student in Faculty of Medicine, Universitas Indonesia. Ms. Karina Octavia, a master student in National Chengkung University, Taiwan. Ms. Intan Puji Pratiwi, who's working at the Japanese construction company, which will be led by the new president, Mr. Kadek Kenda Darmawan, RPH, a master student of health economics, policy, and law in Erasmus University, Rotterdam, Netherlands. And the vice president, Ms. Alicia Salsabila Indrawan, who works as humanitarian organization officer. Congratulations to all selected main coordinators. We hope that you can grow and expand SAI in becoming a better association for our members and those science and technology enthusiasts. Thank you and good luck. All right, once again, congratulations to the new coordinators of Sakura Alumni Association in Indonesia. Now, let's hear some words from our new president and vice president. First, I will be giving the time to our new president of SAI, Mr. Hendra. So, Mr. Hendra, the screen is yours. All right. Hello, everyone. I hope you are doing safe and healthy. All right, I will reintroduce myself. My name is Kadek Hendra Dermawan. You can call me by Kadek or Hendra, but both of will be okay. And now I'm a registered pharmacist in Indonesia, and I'm uh, currently, I'm a master's student at the Erasmus University in the Netherlands. And now I'm your uh, new president of the Sakura Alumni Association in Indonesia. All right, first of all, I'm delighted to say thank you for your participating in this mega event of SAI. And I do hope that you already absorb the fruitful inf information from our inspiring guests and speakers. All right, and as a new president, along with my new coordinator, we will try to uh, focus on the trade point the firstly, serve the members as well as build a strong bonding within the member of SAI. The second importance is connect our activity line with GST, which is our donor or a Japan side. And then third, uh, uh, last but not least, promote the study and working in Japan along with introducing the, the SAI to the external partners. Since the association or organization play a crucial role to achieve the collective goal of our association of SAI, choose, I really need all of your support, a company and, com and cooperation. I think that's all the uh, information from me and looking forward for your active participation. See you in the next event of SAI. And now uh, I will give the time and floor to uh, the new Vice President of SAI, Mrs. Alicia, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Hendra. Uh, konnichiwa, good afternoon from Makassar. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alicia Salsabila Intrawan, uh, currently working in non-profit international organization focusing uh, on conflict and crisis situation in Indonesia and Timor-Leste. 
So uh, this is such a humbling privilege for me to serve as the next uh, vice president of Sakura Alumni Association in Indonesia for 2021 and until, until 2022. Uh, thank you for trusting me to handle um, this role. And I do realize that me and the next president, Hendra, won't be able to deliver our activities for this term without the support of the new coordinators, the previous coordinators, GST, and other stakeholders. Therefore, I highly hope we can cooperate and work as a team to strengthen and maintain the positive relationship between Indonesia and Japan, the, rela the relationship with all the parties involved, and also to create meaningful and sustainable activities. So let's get it done. This is the time to deliver. And yes, there might be many obstacles along the way and the road uh, might be bumpy. But I do believe when we work together, hand in hand, we can overcome it and deliver high quality results. Thank you. All right, thank you for the motivating speech, Mr. Hendra and Ms. Alicia. So before we end, we'd like to announce that as AC Japan will host a Zoom event on Saturday, September 4th, and it will be about job hunting as an international student in Japan. Main coordinator, Mr. Lai Hongwei, coordinator, Mr. Huang Lei, and special guest, Mr. Austin Zhang, president of Max Scholars Association, will share useful advice and future outlook of the job market. In the final ending slide of this webinar, you will find registration details and more will be announcing through SSC Facebook and Mail Magazine. We look forward to your participation. And before we end the second Zyronian and lessons from Japan, I would like to make two announcements. The first one is that we will send you feedback form to your email. Please kindly fill out the form directly afterwards. The second one is that the video of this Sai reunion and tech lessons from Japan will be uploaded soon on YouTube. So for all of you who want to rewatch the lecture from our notable speakers, you may watch it later after this session. As an appreciation to all participants, I would like to invite my friends, the coordinator from Sai, to join us on the stage and turn on your camera to take a group photo. All right, so let's open the camera, everyone. Great, very great. Okay. Okay, let's begin the photo. Are you ready? Okay, let's begin the photo. In three, two, one, smile. All right, one more time. Three, two, one. Okay, wonderful. Once again, thank you for your enthusiasm for this webinar and see you the next event of Sakura Alumni Associations. Okay, um, maybe you can turn on your audio. We can, um, we can do our, uh, our, what is that to say? Our slogan, yeah, okay. Maybe you can turn on your audio for all the panelists. Okay, let's begin. Sakura Science Club, we are we one. Are one. We are one. Thank you, until next time and have a nice day. Have a nice day. See you. Have a nice weekend, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Matai Masho.